Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to worship this Sunday morning. I'm glad you made it in despite all that scary snow outside that we got overnight. Well, it's good, to, it's good to be here with all of you. It's wonderful to worship. We have Sunday school today. We have communion today as well here in worship. And everybody is welcome at this table. And we have another special guest with us. You may recognize him from a few Sundays ago. Hans is back. Hi, Hans. <laughs> oh, a round of applause. Hans is back. He is not playing his guitar today. Sorry. Oh, see, I, I asked him if he wanted to do special music too, but Hans is going to preach for us this morning, and we're, we're glad, to, glad to have you with us and have you worshiping up with us this morning too, buddy. You're always welcome here. And welcome to all of you worshiping online, of course, as well. It is wonderful to be part of the church together with all of you too. I have no other announcements before we begin our service. So we will begin with our opening hymn, number 379, Now the Green Blade Rises. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And now we'll sing this, the thief which you can find on page 149, the little numbers in the front of your hymnal.
I now invite you to join me in praying our prayer of the day, which you can find printed right there in your bulletin. Almighty and eternal God, the strength of those who believe and the hope of those who doubt, may we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we'll now hear the readings. The first lesson for this morning is recorded in the first chapter of 1 Peter, beginning with the third verse. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By this great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice when a, with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Here endeth the lesson. Thanks be to God. All right, kids, now it's our time. Come on up. I know you're here. There we go. Good morning, good morning. Ooh, our balcony crew, you guys are hustling today. All right. Oh, how are y'all doing today? Good. Did you enjoy the nice warm weather this past week? Did you break the shorts out? Yeah. Yeah, and now it's, now it's just like winter again. Blech. But spring will come back. It always comes back, just like Jesus. So today in Sunday school, you guys and us big kids up here we're gonna learn, we're gonna hear about this guy named Thomas. Thomas was a really close friend of Jesus's. He was one of his 12 best friends, uh, those disciples. And he really, he really, really cared about Jesus. So when Jesus died on the cross, he was terribly sad. He was, he was very, very sad and he was feeling pretty hopeless and doubtful because it is not fun to watch people who you care about and who you love be in pain. It's just not, it's just not a pleasant thing at all. So all of a sudden, like we know, Jesus rises from the tomb on Easter and he's back and people are starting to see him again. And people tell Thomas, Thomas, Jesus is back, just like he said. And Thomas was having such a hard time that he's, I think he didn't want to get his hopes up. Have you ever had somebody maybe, maybe promise you something that seems like too good, too good to be true? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to get you this and this present. Or you have a friend that says, oh, we're going to, we're going to hang out we're gonna hang out on this day, like on this Saturday, and it's gonna be super fun, and then it just doesn't, all of a sudden it doesn't happen. I think Thomas didn't wanna get his hopes up too much because he was really sad already about Jesus. 
But people tell Jesus this. They say, Jesus, Thomas, Thomas still isn't so sure that you're around. He, he, he doesn't want to believe that you're back. And Jesus, who cares about his friend Thomas so much, comes, comes back, comes back to see Thomas and says, Thomas, I hear you've been looking for me. Here I am. Um, maybe he said, I missed you too. I don't know. But he, he comes back to let his buddy Thomas know that he, he cares about him and he wants him to have hope again. And then Thomas is so full of hope tells Jesus, they call Jesus, my Lord and my God, which is a really big deal. Um, and all of a sudden, it's all good. So I guess there's two things that I want you guys to know about Thomas and Jesus here today, is that one, just because Jesus is all about joy and love doesn't mean that it's not okay to be sad. It's good for us to be sad about things sometimes because crappy things happen in life. But we also know that Jesus, who loves each of us so, so very much, will send us people and signs and things to let us know that, that, he's, that he's still around, that love is still a very, very real thing, and that um, he will all that Jesus will always be with us. Because you know where I see Jesus, even if I can't see him, not up there. Even though I look up there all the time, I see him here in you guys, sometimes in Hans, and all these people out here too. Yeah, do you see him, Luella? Yeah, you see Jesus out there? Yeah. See, see, and I know, I know Jesus is still around because of all the love, all the love that we have, and that all together, all of us help us find joy and happiness again. And that is a very, very good thing. So, you look ready to pray. Yeah? All right. We'll, we'll pray, and then we'll send you guys off to Sunday school. All right? Dear Jesus, thank you for caring about us so much that you, that you come back to us and show us your love through all the people who love us so very much. And that even if we doubt if you are there and if you are still good, you will find a way. We pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys are looking for some candy, aren't you? Yeah. 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 Well, it's kind of like it's kind of like Jesus when he went back to. You're gonna grab two? Who said you could grab two? It's kind of like kind of like with Jesus's friend Thomas. He made him wait a little bit, but sure enough, here it is. The good news. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming up today. Good to see you. You got all of those. Take two. You're welcome. There you go. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit for the reading of the gospel. The Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. 
If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Peace be with you. I start today by posing two questions. Has there ever been a time in your life where you felt ungrounded, like the proverbial rug had been pulled out from under your feet? And second, what is peace and what does it mean to have it? Now, okay, I admit that's technically three, but you know, think about those three still here. Has there been a time in your life where you have felt ungrounded and what is peace and what does it mean to have it? Well, the disciples certainly felt ungrounded more than that, but also traumatized and in great mourning after the arrest and death of their teacher. Just two days after this terrible event, they're gathered together, communing with others who have shared this experience, who can somehow grasp it more fully based on the collective witness of these events that they share. Now, not only this, but their leader was just arrested and executed by those still in power in the very city that they currently reside. And they're more than just mourners. They feel blended, they feel blended in with the mix of grief and uncertainty, afraid. They are afraid because maybe they're next. Yes, this is indeed a turbulent moment, a liminal space and time in which the praises and shouts of Hosanna from just a few days prior seem almost like a fever dream. Is Jesus really dead? What do we do now? Where do we go? What happens? Are we next? It is into this space of great pain and fear and confusion that Jesus enters in with a simple word, peace. Peace be with you. The disciples, upon sight of their savior and teacher and dearly beloved friend, causes them to rejoice. I mean, it can't be, how is he here? We just saw him die, he was buried. We saw him crucified and yet here he stands alive and with the scars to prove it. And again, Jesus says, peace. Peace be with you. The liminal space that the disciples existed in before Jesus' arrival reminds me of a particular March and April three years ago that I'm sure you all remember as well. When the pandemic first sent our entire world into lockdown, before any debate about wearing masks, before we knew COVID could even spread through the air, back when toilet paper was hoarded like dragon's gold, 
And when we all got a break from school or from work for two weeks to flatten the curve, back when we had no idea what was happening, back when we didn't know what came next, an intense change and an abrupt stop to everything that we had known at that point. Now, I know the anxiety that that brought me in that time and the frustration that followed with it, but from the beginning of that time, a particular few words from John's gospel echoed in my mind as the weeks turned into months, turned into years of this experience we've all collectively witnessed. John 14, 27. It's the inspiration also for the first song I wrote during this COVID time. Jesus says directly to his disciples these words. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Again, Jesus says to his disciples, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Now, Jesus is talking about a much more specific peace than simply a feeling of calm or of tranquility. Much like happiness is not simply a fleeting emotion that one feels, but a life cultivated with contentment, God's peace is a lasting guide and constant through storms and turmoil and turbulence. And the peace that comes from God is the peace that the world cannot give. A peace that comes from knowing God's promises for you for eternity. Not just the knowledge of these promises, but knowing these promises. Knowing them as a fully embodied experience of God and not just some work of our cognition. God's peace, the peace that Christ himself gives to us, is not some temporal feeling, but a lasting truth in the midst of hardships we face. And so when Jesus enters this room with the disciples gathered and greets them with peace, this is not a peace they haven't heard before. This is not a new peace. This is a peace that God has given them and that has been with them there all along. Now, does this take away from the fact that there's an angry mob of people in power outside waiting for them? Does it somehow change the past and make it so that Jesus never died and they never witnessed this? Does it undo all the hurt they've experienced through this tumultuous and traumatic event? Well, no, of course not. Because it's precisely because of all the hurt and pain and fear and tumult and turbulence and storm and grief and anger and sadness that Jesus enters into that very space and says, peace, peace be with you. Because in the midst of all of life's woes, in the midst of the good and the bad, God's peace is the promise that there is always a way forward. Because the world deals out pain and when the world deals out grief and the, when the world tries to remedy it with a temporal peace, God steps in and delivers. God gives us living water that we may never be thirsty again. And God gives us life. God gives us life that we may have it and have it and live it abundantly. Peace. Peace be with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Because the promise that God made to you is that God will always love you. 
You will always be God's beloved. That is who you are. And that nothing, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor life, nor death itself, will ever change that. And that no matter what has happened, no matter what is happening, and no matter what is yet to come, God is here. And God brings peace unlike anything that this world could ever give. And so, may the peace of Christ, that peace which surpasses all of our understandings, keep your hearts and minds on Christ Jesus. Amen. Our hymn of the day is 807. Congregation, I now invite you to stand with me as we confess our faith using the words of our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, united in the hope and the joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all God's people in need. God of new birth and new life, the good news of your resurrection brings refreshment to a weary world. Following those women at the tomb and the disciples who will, who will go out from this room full of fear 
Empower us to boldly share your radical love through our words and our works. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you breathe your spirit into the disciples and gave them your peace, breathe your spirit of healing upon all creation, O Lord. Nourish the earth, give us rain when it's needed, and plenty of sunshine to dry us out. May we work together to create and sustain this world that you have so beautifully created in your image. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You prepared the disciples for their ministry by calming their fears and giving them your peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding. So may you do the same for us, equip our communities, leaders, our public servants with that spirit. May they have it in their hearts so it burns for your justice and their leadership and their guidance reflects your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, you come to us in unexpected ways. So send us to those who hide in fear or question your love, who are full of doubt. Be a healing presence for any who are isolated by any means, addiction, pain, sickness, grief, mental illness, and all those other things that bring us pain and separate us from each other and from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And resurrect in God, you bring us new life every single day. And we thank you for blessing us with companions on our faith journey, but especially those who now rest in your love, who are still there and guiding us, and whose spirit still remains. Strengthen us with your eternal peace of your promises so we can trust that you will bring us to that place with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift these prayers and our praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of Christ, as if you haven't heard it or had it already, be with you all. Let's share a sign of peace with one another, after which we'll receive our offering.
Let us pray. Gracious God, you give us so many things out of your abundant love, each other, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. So may we use what we produce from what you give us to serve our neighbors in love and let everybody know that you will be there for them and that your generosity will include them too. Amen. So a couple announcements for today. I do not have too many, but thank you again, Hans, for, for preaching for us today, bringing us the word. Always good to have you. I'm sure he'll be sticking around for coffee hour again. He's a sucker for coffee hour, so if you want, he, he is, trust me. Hans and I, the reason Hans and I have gotten along all these years is like snacks and treats, like come on. It's, it's a big perk of this business, you know. <laughs> so he'll be, sticking her, he'll be sticking around for that. Um, confirmation is back on this Wednesday uh, at 7 at our normal time. Finally, I have missed all of you guys throughout Lent. Um, and next Sunday, um, if you are curious or have already said to yourself, I am thinking about... Being a member of this congregation, boy, do I have the opportunity, not of a lifetime maybe for you, but those of us kind of in this new member cohort, which again, includes me, I'm still a new member of, the, I'm a new member of this congregation too. Um, we're just, we're gonna have a sit down, hang out, get to know each other, um, probably answer some questions on my end and just hopefully hear about what, what drew you to this place and what would you, what would you like to see, um, what would you like to see this congregation come, become and grow into now that you're here? Um, so that will be next Sunday during coffee hour in the fellowship hall. We'll grab, we'll grab a table and hopefully we'll have to pull up extra chairs. Wouldn't that be something, church, huh? <laughs> Okay, are there any other announcements today from the floor? My usual suspects, I do not see. So, we will continue on into communion. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right to give our thanks and praise. For on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Now gathered around this table by the peace of the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As I said earlier at the beginning of the service, all are welcome at this table. Christ's body and blood, forgiveness, grace, and mercy are for you and are for you forever. So come, taste, and see, and know that you are loved by God.
now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. And now, as you go out into the rest of your week, into the world, I leave you with this blessing, which you have heard of some variation already in this service. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 367, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds. Go with the peace of Christ, the peace that surpasses all understanding that the world cannot give, to serve the Lord. 